Hi guys, it's Claire Nocti. Welcome back to my channel and to part three of my series exploring the most powerful placements in astrology for artistic and creative abilities. I collected and graphed a large survey of the astrological charts of 1,200 of the most influential artists of all time and through this series I've been sharing the results of that study, answering the question, what are the most common placements that linked and united these immensely creative individuals together? What is the energy or the perspective that they shared that helped them to succeed in this field? I've explored three important nakshatras so far and in this video, part 3, I'll be exploring the fourth key nakshatra, the one that actually held a title with the most important statistical significance. There will first be some review on this nakshatra, then I'll expand on it in the way that it contributes to the art world specifically. And at the end of this video, I'm excited to be able to now explain and introduce to you guys the first real book that I have published, which is on the 27 nakshatras and creativity. Alright, that's it for the intro, I'm just gonna jump right in and I really hope that you enjoy the video. The trick is to combine your waking rational abilities with the infinite possibilities of your dreams. Because if you can do that, you can do anything. Just think it's coffee and it will be. Thought is real. Physical is the illusion. Because I could find freedom on this canvas. There is a fifth dimension. All of this. Everything is your creation. Beyond that which is known to me. You're getting sucked into the illusion and you're dragging me. It is a dimension vast as space. Can you tell the difference between dreams and reality? And as timeless as infinity. Here, this is your world. Your dreams come real here. This is your world now. It is the middle ground between light and shadow. Dix ans, il a ses épisodes d'inversion à la réalité. Between science and superstition. Lies between the tip of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call the Twilight Zone. I am exploring this nakshatra in depth last, but it was certainly not least. In fact, for the planetary position in which it dominated, it held the most statistical weight of any nakshatra in this survey so far. Swati is essentially the highest spiritual pinnacle that can be reached through immersion into the arts. It's up to me, I'm the dreamer. When we spend enough time orienting into illusions like art, lucid dreams, or video games, our consciousness acclimates to these mini worlds. Returning to our world, as we attempt to readjust to reality, life itself feels like a dream or simulation. Through introducing these increasingly lifelike creations, Rahu can shake us awake from the dream that is our Make universe. Sure Everything is backwards now. Like out there is the true world. Where is this place I went? And then here is the dream. The answer is, it doesn't make any difference. You are getting seduced by the simulation! Yes, you are a hundred years hence. On this planet or wherever there is human life, lesson to be learned. Swati is called the self-goer, the individual who uses illusion to shift their perspective out of enslavement to this universe and into personal creative freedom. There is absolute freedom here. To submerge one's consciousness into the artificial worlds of dreams or art until everything seems inherently illusory. But at the same time then, our many creations are elevated to a position as being seen to be as real, as worthy as the grand creation in which we have found ourselves. Swati hammers the question, is imagination, our simulations, our dreams truly different than reality, or are their core mechanisms inherently the same? This flexible nakshatra shakti is to scatter like the wind and it can forever go into new places, both with 
the movement of its mind, as well as the way it goes with the flow like a vagrant wanderer finding inspiration wherever it finds itself. The myth goes that the winds of Swati desired, may I win the freedom to move as I wish in all the worlds, and this nakshatra thrives in any area of reality in which this concept naturally arises. All of you have just entered the twilight zone. Four, three, two. In all of the potential horror or excitement that comes in being in a place where the only boundaries are that of imagination, whether through dreams, art, or technology, nothing binds the movement of the winds of Swati to imagine and create whatever they get the urge to experience. It's a place where the limits of reality are your own imagination. So the reason I am speaking on this nakshatra last is because you've been attuned to the pioneering nature of Rahu who beckons us all into the future. You have familiarized with the intense, passionate nature of Venus who urges us to venerate and fight for beauty and pleasure. Combining these two planetary energies is Swati, this extremely special nakshatra for art, which partakes of Rahu's imagination to break down walls and enter new territories, learning sensorially, but it is also touched by the powers of Venus at the core of Libra, enjoyment flowing through the senses, driving its creative journey. These planetary energies melt together to produce a means of learning through illusion, a cosmic force who commands our direction forward, but with pleasure as the true guide. I have previously explored Swati in a full nakshatra exploration. Now realizing that it's so prominent in the arts, I want to provide some updated examples and then weave these themes into new understandings relating to Swati's artistic strength. While Shatabisha pioneers new, more realistic illusions and implements them technically, Swati teaches us to enjoy learning through and pouring ourselves into them, suggesting that they are not inherently different than the grand illusion that is life. These individuals are so intuitively and unconsciously attuned to this concept that they are often accused of not valuing reality enough, of being overly absorbed into the plane of ideas, even as escapists. I can always escape to this piece of canvas and create any illusion that I want. However, as I will explore through this video, this mindset proved to be productive for those who apply themselves to the realm of the arts. My focus on Swati for this series arises in that it took the most mathematically significant field-related position as the top in Akshatra amongst 1200 artists for Mercury. I'm actually going to explore a bit more in a short video that I'll be publishing sometime soon on why Mercury in general is so influential, answering more deeply the question, why was Mercury in either Swati or Porva Shot and nakshatras, two most important factors in this survey. Mercury is the traditional significator of the 10th house, one's reputation and career, aligning these individuals the most exaggeratedly with a career and titles in the arts. It's such an interesting verification of astrology the way that in every art branch survey, in these totally separate pools of completely different artists who work with different mediums, that Mercury in one or both of these two nakshatras link them all together. Swati was the top Mercury in the literary and musical arts surveys and the third highest Mercury amongst visual artists. As I mentioned, Mercury in Porva Shada came second after Swati in the musical and literary fields, second in the performing arts, and first in the visual arts. Furthermore, in the combined 1200 artist survey, Swati also took other titles across the board. It was the top nakshatra for Jupiter, the second highest for Mars, and came in third for the Ascendant after the Falgunis. With Swati's influence as well as strength from other nakshatras in Libra, Libra was ultimately the creative powerhouse zodiac sign here. It was the top sign for Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, and the Lagna. So that was another indicator of Venus's general importance for art. In addition, to the prominence of the Venus rolled nakshatras of Porva Ashara and Porva Falguni, as well as Venus in the first house being the most important house placement overall. So Swati's obsession with total freedom can really only be satisfied in these areas that fully welcome and submit to the commands of the projections of one's mind. You see a body because you like seeing one. We're seeing what we choose to see. I have previously explored this nakshatra's impact on the sci-fi genre, and Rod Serling's iconic show Twilight Zone was a major cultural influence in this regard. The Twilight Zone is this liminal space described as a dimension of sight and sound, but also of mind, of the mind being what creates or commands what your senses experience, whether it's a dream or a nightmare. It's a nightmare! I told you, you must exercise control of yourself, that it all depended on your mind. Everything is your creation. In the worlds that Swati favors and creates, even the bodily form is changeable and created by the mind. Tall, beautiful, scary, 
a different sex, a different species. It's all your call. That's me. Well, that's my avatar. At least, until I feel like changing. This relates to Swati's traditional connection of its basis above being moving in various directions. You don't need a destination when you're running on an omnidirectional treadmill with quadraphonic pressure sensitive underlay. But you can have so much damn fun in your dreams. Hey, you know what I've been working on lately? What's that? 360 vision, man. I can see in all directions. Its basis below being change of form and the result of these being self-willed shifts and transformations. This makes sense in that the goddess Bhuvaneshwari, who is energetically associated with this nakshatra, represents the fertile void ready to nourish and hold creation. Quoting David Frawley's contemplations on her, Bhuvaneshwari teaches about the unitary space connecting and underlying all limited forms. Consciousness is the field in which all objects occur and without which they have no meaning. Grasping this field, we can possess all objects, the entire universe itself, without leaving the room. He showed us that we could go somewhere without going anywhere at all. So in this way, Bhuvaneshwari directs one's attention to the ocean of unitary space instead of the limited forms that are like waves rising and falling within this ocean. With this mindset, Swati sees through illusion and shifts like the wind into free movement through the field of consciousness. And I think we're all looking for freedom. At least I am. Compared to Shadabisha, Swati expresses as an earlier, less formed, more playful type of innovation. Through sci-fi, this nakshatra contemplates possible advancements or changes in the far future freely, without much fixation on or worry about whether, when, or where they will be able to be executed on a technical level, but just having a totally open mind to imagine what could be possible. This is your invention! I invented that? Oh, it's like super popular! What is it? A thought visualizer? Strawberries, a dinosaur swimming in the ocean. So just as instinctually as Swati brings lucidity and individual willfulness into the realm of dreams, as creators they bring dreams into physical reality. By dreaming every day, dreaming with our hands and dreaming with our minds. In this listing of the top 10 films about lucid dreaming, 7 out of 10 are created by or starring natives of this nakshatra. You gotta be able to ask yourself, Hey man, is this a dream? See, most people never ask themselves that when they're awake or especially when they're asleep. Seems like everyone's sleepwalking through their waking state or wake walking through their dreams. The film most devoted to truly contemplating the practice of lucid dreaming on a spiritual level is Waking Life, written and directed by the Swati Moon native Richard Linklater. And later than that, I found out that I was still dreaming, dreaming that I'd woken up. Those are called false awakenings. I used to have those all the time. The synopsis summarizes, dreams, what are they? An escape from reality or reality itself. It follows the dreams of one man in his attempt to find and discern the absolute difference, if any, between waking life and the dream world. What if I were to tell you that you can take control of all of this, everything? David, look at all these people. Seems as though they're just all chatting away, doesn't it? Yeah. Nothing to do with you? No. And yet? Maybe they're only here because you wanted them to be here. <laughs> you are their god. Not only that, but you can make them obey you or even destroy you. Well, what I'd love for them to do is shut the fuck up, especially you. Next is the iconic lucid dreaming film Abre Los Ojos, which was originally written and directed by the Swati Moon native Alejandro Amenabar, and then remade in English as Vanilla Sky, starring the Swati Ascendant native Tom Cruise. In this film, he signs a contract to end his life, have his body frozen, and instead enter a lucid dream of his design in which he can align his reality with all of his wishes. Your life will continue as a realistic work of art, painted by you, minute to minute and you'll live it with the romantic abandon of a summer day, with the feeling of a great movie or a pop song you always loved, a living dream. And in Watch, he'll forget or not realize the difference between this dream and the waking life that he'd lived. He bases the beauty of his dream world off of works of art that were important to him during his life, like the skies of a Monet painting. Under these beautiful Monet-like skies, 
My mother's favorite. And you sculpted your lucid dream out of the iconography of your youth. An album cover that once moved you. In review from my last video, The Science of Sleep was written and directed by the Swati native Michelle Gondry. I'm talking quietly to not wake myself up. And is all about this concept of entering the imagination fully through dreaming. Moi, Stephen, tu peux me dire pourquoi tu pas allé travailler aujourd'hui? Pas vrai, maman. Tu travaillais toute toute la journée. À mon rêve. Je suis très fatigué. As well as bringing dreams into our world through creativity and innovation. He also wrote and directed the exploration through dreams that is eternal sunshine of the spotless mind included on this list. Avatar is included as well. It revolves around the main character played by Swati Moon native Sam Worthington who goes to sleep and transfers his consciousness out of his body and into another world and form. Next, What Dreams May Come includes some major Swati elements to it as well and stars Swati ascendant native Robin Williams. It portrays the after-death state as a kind of dream or nightmare in which you create and learn to control your own world fully with your imagination and in which anything is possible. It's real. Where's all the pain? You don't need it anymore. This is your world now. The artistic nature of his combination of Shadabisha Moon and Swati Ascendant is also shown in this film. You know, to me, Paintings are the most important, interesting thing in the whole world. Similar to Vanilla Sky, his heaven is itself a painting in which he dwells. I was looking through his postcards. Paintings were his obsession. The Matrix is the last Swati film on the list, something I also covered in my previous Swati video. Have you ever had a dream, Neo, that you were so sure was real? What if you were unable to wake from that dream? How would you know the difference between the dream world and the real world? In more recent films that have been published since I created my last Swati video, the movie Bliss stars Swati Moon native Owen Wilson. His character is accused of always drawing his daydreams during work hours, where he illustrates his dream home and dream wife who he sees vividly. When he encounters this woman in real life, she tells him that he is actually contained within a simulation. You could see the difference between what's real and what's illusion. You'd know that and you're supposed to know that by now. She explains that the real world is actually the one he gets glimpses and memories of when he draws and dreams, and she instructs him to wake back up into that reality. Do it. Oh. She's not real. Get her. Ultimately, this film forces you to question and try to uncover which reality is the real one. It creates confusions and reality shifts that place you in the Swati philosophical perspective to ultimately be able to focus on the illusory underlying nature of both realities. For example, in this film, he struggles to determine whether his daughter was real or was just a projection of his mind. In Vanilla Sky, the same thing occurs with the Swati native's dream therapist father figure. This winning man is your creation and it's in his nature to fight for his existence, but he's not real. I'm real. I have two daughters. And you know that. What are their names? I'm real. Right. You're just the result of a chemical flux in my brain, that's all! Do you mean we don't really exist? Most of the people that I've been encountering, and most of the things that I would want to say, it's like they kind of say it for me, and almost like at my cue. Another new movie, Free Guy, stars Swati Moon native Ryan Reynolds. It is often compared to the film Ready Player One by Swati Moon native Steven Spielberg. You can do anything. Go anywhere. Like the vacation planet. Surf a 50-foot monster wave in Hawaii. You can ski down the pyramids. You can climb Mount Everest with Batman as well as compared to the Lego movie, a movie where Swati Ascendant native Chris Pratt plays a similar role to Ryan Reynolds in Free Guy. Free City, where he lives, is an online open world video game. Reynolds in the film is an NPC unaware that his world is a simulation. One day, he encounters the human player Molotov Girl, played by a Swati Moon actress. She's singing a song that, like in Bliss, he says his dream girl will like. There is no easy way to say this. This world, it's a video game. You're not real. And from this, he begins to deviate from his programming and move into true realization. I know this world is just a game. The name of this film perfectly reflects Swati's desire to move and live freely. Here, Reynolds is working to obtain freedom from his NPC consciousness and move with lucidity and control, creating his reality through this play world. 
We seem to think we're so limited by the world and the confines, but we're really just creating them. You keep trying to figure it out, but it seems like now that you know that what you're doing is dreaming, you can do whatever you want to. You're dreaming, but you're awake. You have so many options, and that's what life is about. The pattern comes over and over in these films of such freedom from limitation that even gravity is overcome. I don't suppose this thing can fly. <laughs> no. Jump. As the presiding deity of this nakshatra is Vayu, the god of wind, the attainment associated with Vayu, Vayu Gaman City, is to become capable of flying or levitating. Just let these big old clouds just float around the sky and have fun. Clouds are about the freest thing in nature. Like the egg which I've previously explored relates to Swati. The egg. The whirlwind spiral is another motif commonly featured in this nakshatra's artworks. It is a symbol often used, for example, as a signature for Suntela Ndoki, the goddess of wind in Palo Mayambe. This symbol can be considered in the way that Swati strives for individuality against the whirlwind of fate. Like in Free Guy, it works to direct itself and create its own reality within the spinning pool of illusion that often keeps people completely asleep or unconscious, submitted under illusion. But only in their dreams can men be truly free. It was always thus, and always thus will be. So now, after having acclimated to and immersed into Swati works and viewpoints on these subjects for a few minutes, it becomes natural or intuitive to understand why Swati energy tends to lead to effective art creation. Bhuvaneshwari's bija is Hreem, the Maya or illusion bija. Swati uses this Rahuvian mechanism, pouring passion for illusion into their works, and in that way create freedom-fueled mini-worlds that can be as or more engrossing to people than our own universe. In this way, their works are arguably the most enticing of all artworks to the masses, even to the point of addiction and escapism, and I'll expand on these dangers more later in the video. So Swati is rebellious right along with Shadabisha on the edge, pushing humanity into the future. With the explorers of the dream world. But Swati relates more to charging simulations with the strong mesmerizing that tempts people to enter and remain within an artwork. Rahu's drive to move people forward forward and defy tradition is powerful for art where the newest things churn the most excitement and where individualism and free thought is essential. Rahu is the mechanism that means the future is transformed, that the future doesn't just mean time passing but means advancing. Santella Ndoki is the goddess of transformation. For example, humans who utilize Rahu whereas other species do not, often use the three-age system, measuring time based on change and technological advancement like the stone, bronze, and iron ages. Saturn rules time and is exalted in Swati, the nakshatra of these winds and prana of life force of free movement. Saturn, the emblem of control, does well in this sign relating to controlling illusion, to lucidity, and self-willed transformations and evolutions. Control over your prana, life force, is how you do absolutely everything, and thus why some myths or texts place Vayu as the most important god or explain that Reem is the most important bija, because without life force fueling consciousness, there's nothing. So Swati holds this belief that the many worlds of art, dreams, and imagination are as philosophically valid or worthy as our shared world, and for this reason they take the position of a special kind of art teacher who amplifies our individuality, implores us all to follow our hearts, and to defy tradition to align with our personal freedoms. This can be seen repeatedly in corresponding film roles of the natives of this nakshatra. To set the archetypal Swati story stage, you begin in a well-respected, orthodox, uptight institution that values adherence to tradition above all things, and especially above creativity, which by definition is dependent on the Rahuvian wiggling free or tweaking of traditions of stepping outside the box. And then into this institution enters the Swati native, a breath of fresh air, passion, and flexibility that invades these strict premises. In 
Dead Poets Society, the setting is an elite, upper-class, all-boys school. It is the unorthodox poetry teacher, Professor Keating, played by Robin Williams, who blows in like the colorful winds of Swati. As you proceed through the poetry in this book, practice this rating method. As your ability to evaluate poems in this manner grows, so will, so will your enjoyment and understanding of poetry. Excrement. That's what I think of Mr. J. Evans Pritchard. Now I want you to rip out that page. Rip out the entire page. Through this film, Keating inspires the young men to seize the day. Seize the day. Gather ye rosebuds while ye may. The poem he references with this mindset was written by a Swati Moon native. He encourages them to think freely. Armies of academics going forward, measuring poetry. No! We will not have that here. No more of Mr. J. Evans Pritchard. Now, my class, you will learn to think for yourselves again. You will learn to savor words and language. To view the world from a new perspective. I stand upon my desk to remind myself that we must constantly look at things in a different way. And to embrace their artistic urges. Keep ripping, gentlemen. This is a battle, a war, and the casualties could be your hearts and souls. Thank you, Mr. Dalton. For one student, this means passionately pursuing a girl. The heavens made a girl named Chris, with hair and skin of gold. For another, it means disobeying his strict father to become a theater actor. Against her lips I bob and under with it too let me pour the ale. For a third, it means overcoming his intense shyness and expressing himself. The rebellious and passionate mind of Keating stirs so much fervor and change in these young men who were brought up to be conformists. You take a big risk by encouraging them to become artists, John, when they realize that they're not Rembrandts, Shakespeare's, or Mozart's. They'll hate you for it. We're not talking artists, George. We're talking free thinkers. <laughs> Keating is eventually fired, but the boys show their appreciation and respect for the way he'd permanently transformed each of them and connected them to their individualities by performing this iconic final act of rebellion in his honor. While Keating is no doubt a Swati character, as you'll see as I go, I want to touch on some Porva Falguni elements found here before I move on. You may remember Porva Falguni natives are the others who are featured prominently as art teachers in a different way. Venus' rulership remains consistent between Swati and Porva Falguni with this passionate seize the day outlook. Seize the day, boys. Make your lives extraordinary. I wanted to live deep and suck out all the marrow of life. Similar to the quote from my last video regarding always burning with this hard gem-like flame to pursue enjoyment in life shamelessly. The director of Dead Poets Society, Peter Weir, had Moon in Porva Falguni, while the writer had K2 there. The writer's Venetian message was there, but a bit more stifled and blocked below the surface, as can often happen with K2. He originally insisted that Keating should be dying of a terminal illness and that that would explain his fervent attitude towards life. Porva Falguni Moon Peter Weir, however, refused to direct the film with that storyline. He argued that the thing that would make Keating really special was if he held this passionate attitude and love of the arts without impending death, because that's just who he was. So they removed this aspect of the story altogether, which gave it much more meaning. The film Mohabitin was inspired strongly by Dead Poets Society and mirrors it in many ways. Well, John, the curriculum here is set. It's proven it works. If you question it, what's to prevent? them from doing the same. I always thought the idea of education was to learn to think for yourself. Now, these boys age not on your life. Tradition, John. Discipline. I want to remind you that when you are in the Guru Kul, you have to do your own parampara. The all-boys school, Guru Kul, is run by a stern and traditionalist MAGA native, Narayan. A free-thinking music teacher comes to the school. His passionate melody fills the air where music has never been heard. This teacher, Raj Aryan, was played by the Swati ascendant and sun native Shah Rukh Khan. He is the first art teacher to ever be employed by Guru Kul. Just like in Dead Poet Society, he awakens artistic passion in his students and implores them to value the juices of life like music, romance, and beauty. Each boy that he inspires goes on to tap into the desires of his heart and pursue the girl of his dreams. Mohabbat, Sangeet ki sabse badi prerna. Inspiration. Mohabbat aur Sangeet ka bhot gehra rishta hai, kyunki dono ka janam dil se hota hai, aur dono ki kismat bhi 
दिल के कहने पर निर्भर है Eventually, it is revealed that Raj came to the school to get a kind of revenge on Narayan. बधाई हो मिस्टर शंकर। यहाँ की हवाएं भी आपसे डरती। शायद इनको भी मालूम है कि आपको परिवर्तन पसंद नहीं। Who expelled him years earlier when he fell in love with his daughter, played by the swati son in Porva Shada Moon native Ashwira Rai, who in the film was of course an artist herself. Her character commits suicide after Raj is expelled, and it's implied that her suicide is at the fault of her father, who wouldn't allow Venetian love and passion on the school's premises. Because I liked you, because of your new ways, it seemed to me that you were a special part of the school. I'm hearing rumors, John. 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 About some unorthodox teaching methods in your classroom. आज का दिन खत्म होने से पहले आपका इस्तीफा मेरे टेबल पर होना चाहिए. Throughout the film, her memory functions as a kind of love spirit, working with Raj to try to bring passion into the school and break its traditions. And Mr. Narayan Shankar, तब तक तो मैं आपके गुरुकुल का नक्शा ही बदल दूँगा. मैं यहाँ पर इतनी मोहब्बत भर दूँगा कि दस जन्मों तक भी आप उसे निकाल नहीं पाएंगे. इस इमारत की नींव इतनी मजबूत है कि कोई राज आर्यन हाथों में वायलिन और चेहरे पे मुस्कान लिए यहाँ उसकी एक भी ईट हिलाने के लिए कदम नहीं रख सकता। He succeeds at avenging his love by bringing passion, beauty, and free thought into the strict school, despite the K2 natives' challenges. He and her spirit work together to even allow femininity to flood in where women had never set foot on the premises before. Here, the Swati energy wins, overcoming Narayan's fixation on submission and tradition. He shows respect to Raj. पुरानी पीढ़ी को अपनी पुरानी परंपरा तोड़नी होगी ताकि एक नई पीढ़ी एक नई परंपरा बना सके वक्त आ गया है कि मैं पीछे हट जाऊं और आप सबको वो इंसान दूं जिसने मुझे सिखाया कि इज्जत डर से नहीं मोहब्बत से जीती जाती मिस्टर राज आर्यन He opens the gates of the school as well as opens his own mind to love. जी हाँ, गुरुकुल के दरवाजे हमेशा के लिए खुल गए, और होली के रंगों ने गुरुकुल की हवाओं को हमेशा के लिए रंग दिया. This is symbolically finalized when his daughter's ghost now holds his hand as well, showing that the spirit of art and love is now walking with him and allowing him to see beauty wherever he goes. And this is the difference I want to quickly explain between the Venetian nakshatras and the nakshatras at the core of the Venus Rashis, Swati and Rohini. When Venus is strongly forward as a nakshatra lord, it's quite intense, burning constantly, always with an even violent desire to churn pleasure. I need to be better. I need to be perfect. And a very competitive artistic nature. Just because you were number one once does not mean you will be again. I will be number one. I'm going to play first chair in the New York Philharmonic by the time I'm 18. But if I could be great, you don't understand greatness. Sounds fine to you because fine is good enough for you. You don't understand how hard it is to be great. Because I want to be great. God created both the lamb and the tiger. The lamb represents innocence, and the tiger represents savagery. Both parts are perfect and necessary. The tiger lives on blood and murder, kills the lamb, and that is also the artist's nature. I've been doing a lot of reading, you know, like online about like, like uh, just like evolution and like and natural selection and how like there's this thing, right? It is called the apex predator. Right, and basically what this is is the strongest animal in the ecosystem. Right, the lion does not feel guilty when it kills a gazelle. Right, you do not feel guilty when you squash a fly, and I think that means something. I just think that really means something. So what? You want to go out and start a charity or something? That's lame. I mean, why is that lame? I think that there are people that are really good at something, and then there's everybody else. I feel like everybody else. Could just disappear one day and it wouldn't matter. Tell them that we can't stop, that we don't have to stop, that we're better than everybody else, that no one else matters but people like us. You know there is some truth to that, sweetheart. There's a lot of truth, Harry. At least all of those no-talent monsters are taking their pain out in a real way. 
Being great is hard. We drive ourselves crazy with envy, longing for just a taste of the delicious madness of the creative mind. But the truth is, most people aren't willing to put in the work. The journey there is tedious. And those that achieve greatness only do so because they are fucked up enough to push through the pain and failure it takes to reach your potential. Venetian nakshatras are elitist and very choosy about what they find beautiful or venerate, while Rohini and Swati both relate to the concept of finding enjoyment in many or most things. And the natives of both are often called childlike or imaginative, each for reasons relating to being open to learning through any experiences. Rohini does so as the nakshatra of the baby looking to grow and learn through new sensorial experiences in this world, which is why this is where Rahu's curious and innovative nature is exalted. Swati does so as the nakshatra that sees everything in this matrix to be an illusion anyways, so it enjoys or brings enjoyment to any life or dream experience, just like how anything, even mundane things, somehow seem fun when you're doing them in a video game or virtual reality. But Zelda, and it was amazing because it's addicting. I was playing it for hours and hours and hours and hours. Matthew McConaughey's three primary nakshatras all come through his role I showed in my last video in the beach bum in different ways. Porva Falguni relates to the male sexual energy driving his work. Porva Falguni and Rohini together to his hedonism, and Swati to his quality as a vagrant, a Swati archetype which I explored in my first Swati video. Oh setting sun, though the time has come, I warble unto you, while well, no one else does as an artistic drifter. Charlie Chaplin, who is widely considered to be one of the most important figures in film history, had Swati Moon and Ascendant, and matching this drifter archetype, his most famous character was the Tramp, a childlike, bumbling, but good-hearted character portrayed as a vagrant. So next is the movie Sister Act, where Swati Moon native Whoopi Goldberg is a cabaret singer dating a mob boss. When she witnesses his crime, she is placed into the witness protection program disguised as a nun in a convent. Here as well, the Swati native completely upends the quiet, orthodox lives within the institution. We call that an A with an attitude. That's what you need. You have to put attitude in what you say. She stirs trouble and eventually awakens within the nuns more free spirit and joy. She goes up against the traditionalist and strict K2 Nakshatra native here as well. I do feel a traditional program would be best. And traditional like the old way? But, but Reverend Mother, everyone loves our new style. It's brought people back to the church. And that's why he's coming, I mean, because we're doing something new and different. I have been here for years. I've become somewhat obsolete. But you don't have to continue being obsolete. You know, Mary Clarence, it is one thing to rabble rouse, to sweep into town and declare a holiday. You've raised the sisters' expectations. You've excited and confused them. They imagine this neighborhood to be some sort of delightful ongoing bake sale. I feel I am a relic, and I have misplaced my tambourine. She gets them painting murals outside the church, singing soulfully, dancing, and so on, which enlivens the whole church, much like the ending of Mohabbatin. In Mona Lisa's Smile, another major derivative of Dead Poet Society, Swati native Julia Roberts takes the position of art history teacher at the conservative and upper class all girls school Wellesley. They have claws underneath their white gloves. Ooh. The alumni, the faculty, you name it. Watch out for yourself. Too much independence frightens them. Just as in the previous films, she stirs trouble and faces judgment from the conservative school authorities due to the way that she teaches outside of the book and curriculum. It's not on the syllabus. No, it's not. There's no wrong answer. There's also no textbook telling you what to think. Gentlemen, tell you what, not just tear out that page, tear out the entire introduction. Rip it out! Rip! 
Be gone, J. Evans Pritchard, PhD. Rip! Works to enrich the girls' understandings of art and what defines it. You have outlined our new syllabus, Betty. Thank you. What is art? What makes it good or bad and who decides? Encourages a more free definition of what constitutes art. If you're suggesting that rotted side of meat is art, much less good art, then what are we going to learn? And just like Professor Keating does, she heartens the girls to pursue their non-traditional dreams and to reject being conformists. Look at what we have done to the man who refused to conform his ideals to popular taste. We have put him in a tiny box and asked you to copy him. So the choice is yours, ladies. You can conform to what other people expect. That was an exercise to prove a point. Dangers of conformity. Or you can... I know. Be ourselves. When you buy your first tube of paint, you get an artist's license. And that license says you can do anything that makes you happy. In all four of these films, the students are reinvigorated with inspiration and excitement for learning, and enrollment or participation reaches the highest levels in years. Catherine Watson lived by her own definition and would not compromise that, not even for Wellesley. I dedicate this, my last editorial, to an extraordinary woman who lived by example and compelled us all to see the world through new eyes. Just when you think you know something, you have to look at it in another way. Even though it may seem silly or wrong, you must try. Boys, you must strive to find your own voice. Thoreau said most men lead lives of quiet desperation. Don't be resigned to that. Break out. By the time you read this, she'll be sailing to Europe, where I know she'll find new walls to break down and new ideas to replace them with. Hold it, everybody! I've heard her called a quitter for leaving, an aimless wanderer. But not all who wander are aimless. Especially not those who seek truth beyond tradition, beyond definition, beyond the image. Get the hell out of the way! <laughs> captain, my captain. <laughs> I'll we'll never forget you. Far Before a Dead Poet Society was an episode of The Twilight Zone written by Rod Serling called Changing of the Guard. The episode features a poetry teacher who, in despair, goes to sit at his school desk in the middle of the night. The ghosts of many of his past students appear. Each student shares with him a poem that they had memorized due to his influence that they later used as a motivating force to succeed in life or engage in heroic acts. I was conducting research on x-ray treatment for cancer. I was exposed to radioactive Activity and I contracted leukemia. I remember that was an incredibly brave thing you did, but I kept remembering, Professor, something you told me, a quote, a poet named Walter. Howard Arnold Walter, I remember. I would be true, for there are those who trust me. I would be pure, for there are those who care. I would be strong, for there is much to suffer. And I would be brave, for there is much to dare. I never forgot that, Professor. That was something that you, you left me. Each of us has in turn carried with him something that you gave him. We wanted to thank you, Professor. Going along with the Swati themes, he realizes that just in helping these young men tap into the fountain of life force and passion that comes through art and poetry, he assisted them with achieving many other things in life, and therefore, as an effective teacher, he had a special role. Professor Ellis Fowler, teacher who discovered rather belatedly something of his own value. A very small scholastic lesson from the campus of the Twilight Zone. Ron Serling himself was also known for this. He even took a year off from his work on the Twilight Zone to become a professor of drama and writing. Changing of the Guard was the episode that he wrote immediately before doing this with that career transition in mind, celebrating and contemplating the value and change that a passionate art teacher can bring to the world. When listing the reasons that he loved the college at which he taught, he expressed many Swati viewpoints. He said, It is wholesomely dissenting. The dynamic process of change after change is one of the marvelous aspects of this college. We're not mired in any ruts here. 
we're not anchored to any traditions of the past. There's freedom to speak, the same freedom to reason, and above all, the right to question. Due to this nakshatra's association with Vayu and Prana, these natives revitalize and amplify those who encounter them with freedom and willfulness. These inspiring Swati films reflect a few of the other key real-life art teacher examples as well. It's really <laughs> interesting because a couple of us in class were talking about how he just drops those wisdom bombs all the time and that's kind of how his yeah. Academy Award acceptance speech was. Of major A-list actors, the two who are known for having taught theater classes or for becoming college professors within the arts are the Swati natives James Franco and Matthew McConaughey. Who wrote on the thank you note, I wish you were my dad? <laughs> Perhaps the most famous art teacher for the masses of all time was the Swati native Bob Ross, who embodies many of these qualities. He's called the happy painter, with one of his most well-known quotes being that there are no mistakes, just happy accidents. We don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. Just don't worry about it. Learn how to use what happens. Reflecting that easygoing, go-with-the-flow nature of Swati, his work was all about inspiring the artist within anyone, showing people that they could access their artistic side quite easily and express themselves freely. I think each of us, sometime during our life, has wanted to paint a picture. I think there's an artist hid in the bottom of every single one of us. And here we will try to show you how to bring that artist out, to put it on canvas. Such a further affirming fact of the hidden nakshatra links here is that Bob Ross himself was originally inspired to create his show due to his love of the TV painter Bill Alexander, who had Swati Moon. Hooray! That's what we have to do. I have to put myself in that almighty Bobby. Bob and William hit it off nicely. I saw Alexander on television, and like millions of other people, I fell in love with him. I hand over that almighty brush to our mighty man, Bob. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Bill. We've had so many cards requesting classes in this area that we've decided to set one up here, and we will have a class going in the near future. We'll produce some almighty painters. Waldorf schools are a kind of alternative early education based on the belief that the most important component to learning is play, imagination, dreams, and artistic creativity. I want to get you to try being creative on canvas. Just have a good feeling and be happy and and in love with life and the world and, and sit down and begin playing. And it was pioneered by the Swati ascendant native Rudolf Steiner, an occultist and philosopher. Tying to Swati's connection to freedom, his fundamental work is called The Philosophy of Freedom, which addresses the question of whether and in what sense human beings can be said to be truly free. Vayu is the god of the Anahata Chakra, the heart center which is associated with the planet Venus, and this is an interesting connection to the way that Swati natives emphasize being connected with one's heart. I think people empathize with what I do because uh, it comes from here. Come on, go to get go to. Come on, set up Nadilkis and all. Come on, get up, go, go. We start with a vision in our heart and we put it on canvas. And the way that they so devotedly support and amplify the individuality of others through their partnerships and unions and interactions. Leave. Oh, Leave. You have the gift. What a performance. While Shatabisha, with its Saturn Rashi rulership, innovates the actual framework and limitations within the art field, Swati is all about innovating something by breathing new life and Venetian passion into it. It is most present when something has become lifeless due to too much tradition, formality, and standardization, which totally removes the passion because it becomes almost robotic, like how K2 runs in an unconscious manner due to so much past experience and knowing what to do so that things run smoothly. And how do we keep our balance? That I can tell you in one word. Tradition! 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 Because of our traditions, we've kept our balance for many, many years. Here in Anatevka, we have traditions for everything. You may ask, how did this tradition get started? I'll tell you. I don't know.
but it's a tradition. And because of our traditions, every one of us knows who he is and what God expects him to do. There is an important place for both nodes. K2 arrives to destroy whatever is new that is feeble, dangerous, and disconnected from truth. But with Rahu and Swati in particular, it's all about creating refreshing and energizing change through truth's harmonious new expressions. Like the baby plant shoot symbol of this nakshatra, the danger of a new plant sprout is if it doesn't take root. Without our traditions, our lives would be as shaky as, as, as a fiddler on the roof. But change and development can be supported and cherished by the universe when it is rooted in truth. Swati is the force inspiring people into the act of discharging into our world to create change and really making art possible by encouraging them to enjoy learning and playing within Maya. Each movement in the arts goes through a few phases, and unpacking these phases helps to understand why Rahu's rebellious tendency towards defying tradition is essential for the creative world especially. In my last video, I mentioned the Porfa Falguni moon native Jean Marais, who wrote the Symbolist Manifesto. This manifesto sheds more light on the way that Rahu rolls that which is unique, and Venus is what most covets uniqueness. Moray writes that symbolism must be aware of the risk of what was once rebellious becoming conformist, and having a constant need to be more and more audacious to remedy this. He says of previous art movements, any demonstration of art succeeds inevitably in becoming impoverished and exhausting itself. Then of copy and copy, simulation and simulation, what was full of sap and freshness becomes dried out and shriveled. What was new and the unprompted becomes banal and commonplace. Rahu introduces what is new and then Venus charges it with pleasure. Once a creative field or work has both aspects of Rahu and Venus, once it possesses the Shakti of uniqueness and is also extremely enjoyable, the masses, which are rolled by Moon as a planet, start consuming and replicating it rapidly and then standardizing it. This is why Moon rolls that which is normal and common and is the force which can replicate things endlessly until they're ordered and Venus in particular tends to have angst about this process. So Moray provides an important example for his thoughts here by commenting upon his admiration of the Swati Ascendant and Shadabish's son native Victor Hugo. He writes, When Hugo emancipated poetry, those who taught using his example had to think that the poets to come would, like him, be free and only constrained by they themselves. Dare to strike out and find new ground! But this has become for them a love of servitude to which the new poets have copied and imitated in their envy of his forms, the combinations, the chalice, and further habits of Hugo, rather than endeavoring to find the new as he would. That's how, manufactured for the yoke, we fall again from one serfhood into another. After the classical banality, there was the romantic banality. That is to say that commonplace becomes a compulsive thing, in poetry as anywhere else it is death. Contrarywise, let us dare to live, and to live is to sniff the air of the sky, and not the breath of our neighbor, even if this neighbor should be a god. Create your own masterpieces. Don't just try to copy what we're doing. And you can do it. Ultimately, Shadabisha defies tradition simply by inventing something that naturally leads to change and becomes the new standard. People aren't forced into it, it's just something that they see and tend to adopt because it is efficient and a clear display of undeniable and irresistible progress. Swati defies tradition by using passion and pleasure to excite people into changing in ways that cause prana to flow better. They wiggle free of any traditions that inhibit creativity, freedom, and Love. This emphasis on going one's own way and following one's heart is also what inspires Swati natives to be some of the world's most well-known and important whistleblowers, who had the courage to go against tradition or their institution to reveal previously secret or hidden information and to support freedom of thought and knowledge. WikiLeaks is a disclosure portal meant to host restricted or legally threatened material submitted by whistleblowers, and it was created 
played by the Swati Moon native Julian Assange. Chelsea Manning was then the notorious government agent who hacked and leaked nearly 750,000 classified and sensitive documents to WikiLeaks, working closely with Assange. She too has Swati Moon. And then, the infamous whistleblower behind the NSA leak, Edward Snowden, also has Moon in Swati. One of Julia Roberts' top-rated films is Erin Brockovich, where she also plays an important whistleblower. I mentioned in my last video on this Nakshatra how amazing it is the way people naturally give Swati natives titles relating to wind or air, like airheaded, spaced out, free spirit, drifter, and breath of fresh air. Whistleblower is another one of these interesting value-related titles. On a quick side note, Chelsea Manning is a trans woman, and Swati is a prominent Nakshatra in relation to this sexual identity. Some of the most prominent trans women public figures in addition to Chelsea Manning are Swati natives such as Caitlyn Jenner with Swati Sun and Ascendant, called the most famous transgender woman in the world, Swati Ascendant director Lily Wachowski, YouTuber Nikki Tutorials with Swati Moon, the transgender model Leah T with Swati Moon, and Rachel Levine, the first openly trans federal official confirmed by the Senate with Swati Sun. To understand this, you can contemplate how I mentioned that Swati desires to be within and thrives within territories where even form is changeable, a different sex, a different species, where transformation is possible, and where one can take these new avatars. And this relates to the cosmic position and role that Swati has. Swati artworks are perhaps the most sensorially seductive, pulling in and captivating one's attention due to their unapologetic use of cutting-edge technologies, their devotion to building detailed mini-worlds, and their natural passion for the hypnotic mechanism of Maya. Another form of media and entertainment in which they tend to be concentrated, other than in the realm of video games, is in television. And I'll show many examples as I explain why this is. If you think about TV shows, they align with this Rahuvian simulation mini-world concept even more than movies do because they are generally open-ended, more character-based than story-based, and they are simulations that actually evolve. The person who makes a TV show is called a creator rather than director, for example, because as defined by Wikipedia, they actually crafted a world and group of individuals who then transform over time and become more and more real. As we watch the characters experience a range of different situations and life changes, it becomes intuitive to both them and the audience what they would say or how they would react to something. Hey Rick, I have to make a project for the science fair this weekend. You think you could help me out? Whatever. I mean, traditionally, science fairs are a father-son thing. Well, scientifically, traditions are an idiot thing. The writing component becomes less rational and more instinctual because the characters really come alive. And that's why during the pilot episodes or early seasons of a show, characters will seem much more wooden or unbelievable. And then as the actors align with their natures and nakshatras, they do things more authentic to them and slowly change the way that the show is written to conform to what suits their qualities. So with Rahu's devotion to mimicking reality and art, it makes sense that Shadbisha and especially Swati tend to be prominent in the constructing of TV shows. Like RPG video games, TV shows shows feel like entering a world and are much more draining of time and attention, sometimes even years or decades, compared to a film. Now touching briefly on the negative or dangerous side of this nakshatra, there can be some nihilism and selfishness that arises in such viewpoints or orientation into individualism. For example, there was a famous instance of the Matrix killer who killed his parents after obsessing over the Matrix to the point where he believed he was in an illusion and was the only real one. If we're not real, doesn't that mean that nothing you do matters? The seductive, hypnotic appeal of Swati works can show the peak of the danger of art in general. With Swati, people began to plug fully into many worlds that they enjoy and began to unplug from reality, this escapism that I mentioned earlier. After people stopped trying to fix problems and just tried to outlive them. These days, reality is a bummer. Everyone's looking for a way to escape. 
these people then contribute less and less to the grand creation. They want to have total freedom and control, easy to obtain in these little simulations like video games, and over time they begin to give up control of their own lives or even give up their autonomy such as to governments, who can dangerously utilize these escapes into freedom to, ironically, keep people subservient and distracted. Relating to the debilitation of Sun here in Swati, which I'll discuss more on my Patreon when I go into how Swati as an Akshatra functions specifically through each planet. So these sensorial illusions of freedom can in fact become an addictive form of enslavement into Maya, the dangerous side of Rahu that is often spoken of. That is why Bhuvaneshwari, with her spiral symbolism, also represents this circle of creation and destruction. It is said to be her who brings about the Maha Pralaya, the great dissolution of the world. And you can see the way this can take place when people stop putting energy into reality and instead into the shell of distractions and false Swati can be very destabilizing in the way that it orients you into free movement, whereas Ketu is stabilizing and keeps you grounded in moving you across well-worn paths rather than roaming in space and flying into uncharted territory. This is illustrated in the way that in Dead Poets Society, the young man who wants to be a theater actor and is defying his father, his incarnation, his family's wishes, Cheating, you stay away from my son eventually loses all inner stability from the uncontrolled transformation into individuality and commits suicide. This is why a balance between the nodes is essential and both have dangers and strengths even for creativity. So Swati, being at the core of Libra, is located in the natural seventh house of sunset and it is traditional to face west while worshipping Bhuvaneshwari. With sun's debilitation here, you can consider how Swati natives emphasize creativity and individuality but do so in ways separate from their own personal power. They inspire the independence of others through teaching or art. Inspire comes from the Latin inspirare, to breathe or blow into. Like Vayu, they empower with prana identities separate from their own. Rahu is the controller of the outward projection of one's mind, and here he is very actively blowing the life force outward, which is why people around Swati natives become invigorated. This life force that they exhale energizes the films that they create, or the worlds and characters of the stories they write, the video game avatars they play, and so on. In Being John Malkovich, John Cusack, who has Swati Moon, plays a puppeteer who gets a similar satisfaction through his puppets as those who play video games. Tell me, Craig, why do you love puppeteering? Well, Maxine, I'm not sure exactly. Perhaps it's the idea of becoming someone else for a little while, being inside another skin, thinking differently, moving differently, feeling differently. He finds a portal where people can project their consciousness into John Malkovich's body, and he is the only user of this portal who is actually able to begin controlling the actor's behavior through pouring so much of his life force and concentration into this foreign identity. While K2 roles our ancestors and the past that led to our current incarnation, Swati relates to the Rehuvian concept of uprooting oneself from the birth identity. So ultimately, in summary, Swati can be dangerous and and unbalanced, or it can be the most spiritual expression of Rahu because it is using illusion as a tool to wake up to illusion. It's the unobstructed free spirit charging simulations and artworks with so much pranic life force that the illusions become essentially real. Through this experiential process of breathing life into many worlds, we can each begin to conceive of our own universe being crafted in the same way, whereas before Rahu steps forward, before we could willingly shift reality so convincingly, it was much harder for the average individual to mentally grasp this concept. Swati then can be an advocate for freedom to such an extent that they become a teacher bringing ultimate liberation. The Matrix itself, for example, was basically a contemporary religious teaching. It made so many people so quickly see the world differently and is incredibly ingrained in our collective thought, constantly used as a modern metaphor for contemplating and grappling with the idea of the grand illusion. In celebrating and amplifying the vibrancy of 
of individuality, of free thought, and of uniqueness. Swati is incredibly powerful when found in the right scenarios, in the unbound realm of creativity where one needs to be imaginative, letting their mind travel in whatever direction it desires to go, led only by pleasure and love. Our universe is Maya, and Swati is the mechanism that inspires us to fall in love with her, rouses us to play creatively and freely within her, and urges us to embrace the most beautiful and pleasurable experiences that she can offer. Swati is the art instructor or artwork that moves you to be free too, to experience life like a self-willed dream which you yourself direct and create. To Swati, learning through or playing within the illusion of this reality or the artistic ones we create are not fundamentally different. Of course, for that reason, this Nakshatra asks, why wouldn't you take the path of creativity, freedom, and love in this beautiful play that is life? We don't read and write poetry because it's cute. We read and write poetry because we are members of the human race. And the human race is filled with passion. Medicine, law, business, engineering, these are noble pursuits and necessary to sustain life. Poetry, beauty, romance, love, these are what we stay alive for. Open Whitman, O oh me, O oh life of the questions of these recurring, of the endless trains of the faithless, of cities filled with the foolish, what good amid these, O oh me, O oh life? Life exists and identity. And the powerful play goes on and you may contribute a verse. And the powerful play goes on and you may contribute a verse. What will your verse be? Because the findings from this research were so immense, I'm excited to have published my first real book, which investigates creativity in astrology and includes all of what I've learned about the 27 nakshatras as well as other placements through this art research. This video series was focused on which nakshatras were strongly present through all fields of art, and there is a fifth important honorable mention nakshatra for that, with a whole chapter devoted to it. As you'll see in the book, it has definitely earned that through its creative contributions over the centuries. Then the book really explores much more deeply what nakshatras and placements perform very well in specific art fields. So actually, for each art branch, there was a nakshatra not discussed in these videos that using that one particular medium. There are some amazing connections such as certain chakras that one can be oriented into based on their dominance type that makes them especially succeed at one art form versus another. There's planetary approaches to improving your creativity in general or your ability to work with a particular medium of your choice as well as considering a few nakshatras that were the least present, but really what this shows about their nature and even about their strengths. And there's much more. There's every graph showing strongest and weakest placements and everything in between for Rashi's nakshatras and houses for the combined survey and all four art branch surveys. So compared to the video series which highlighted expansively strong placements, the book is a great way to see the 27 nakshatras as a whole and how they each play into the arts in different ways to understand them all and their interactions more deeply in a way that's informed by firm mathematical research. The book also includes the transcripts of all three of these full videos for easier review and reference. Now, the reason that you were able to watch this video is due to my patrons who fund my research and video creation. Thank you to all my patrons and extra thanks to my Abhijit level patrons, Ashley De La Cruz, Avnish Bongar, Semia Hogan, Teresa Green, Maddie DRX, Ray, Michael M, Karim Safehold, Eric Linden, Crystal Perales, Stephanie Cruz, Carrie Don Brown, Shashi E, Jordan A, Lola, Juarel McCowan, John Langston, TTHP, William Rivera, Bella Jazz, Juliana Sanz, Melissa Davis, Ryan Loden, Nikki Tanya Allen, Andre, Jalen, Carita Smevag Halton, Alba Gega, Allison San Jose, Yakari, and Anna Bono. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.